you will continue to remember uh, the families uh, who are in bereavement. Uh, the Melton family of uh, Brother Frank Melton, a uh, gospel preacher in our area over 40 years. I want to pray for the family. Uh, I want to pray also uh, for the Mark and Jones family. As, as some of you know, Sister Lisa Mark uh, passed away. I remember when she was a young girl in high school and uh, she passed away. So we want to uh, pray for the family and also don't forget the Hardy family at the loss of Sister Tawanda. Pray, and you may know others, pray for those families, as these uh, were saints in the kingdom of the Most High God. And we hope, pray that the Lord uh, will comfort those hearts. We want to talk uh, this day uh, concerning uh, this particular message uh, that we want to deal with. And we want uh, to make sure that we get a good grasp on the message. I want to also encourage you. Uh, those who can return uh, tonight, if it's possible, because uh, we are preaching uh, several different messages. This one is a part two, but we're also uh, preaching uh, messages in the evening uh, concerning uh, marriage, dating, the relationship in that. Uh, you don't have to be married to attend, but we encourage you. To do so, if you know someone else, invite them. If not, then tell them to go online. The messages uh, are online for free. But the idea is that uh, if you can, uh, because we have situations uh, that develop where we seem to be bogged down so many times in discussing the rights that people have uh, to get divorces and things of that nature. Uh, but we have to also remember to spend time concerning how to stay married, how to love one another, how to understand the relationship uh, that you are in, and how not to listen to the evil people of the world, especially our legislators, especially in Texas, who allow you to live together in chambering, which is a sin, cohabitating without being married. And coming before both God and man, that we may know that you are married. So that is a sin. And every one of them that die will give an account of the judgment. Amen. So will you and I. We don't get to make up any rules. God don't care if you are in his kingdom. He'll judge you without of Christianity. Yeah. Outside, which he knows you know it in your heart how to do. As he judged all without of the law of Moses. God knows how to judge. I mean, because it would be better not to even be a Christian if you don't have to follow the Christian rules outside of Christianity. I mean, who wouldn't want that life? I would, wouldn't you? You got to do nothing. Just live and die. All them people go to heaven look like. That's ridiculous. Isn't that not ridiculous? So anyway, he didn't know that what he was supposed to do in words. But it doesn't matter. You'll be judged outside of the law. You do know how to treat one another, how to love. See, that is built in when you're created. You know how to honor God. Why? Because you know how to reach him. Because he's the creator. And he reveals, according to Romans 1, within himself, who he is with being in you. His spirit is in you as he created a piece of him, taken from him, and made you. Not the Holy Spirit as it is in the saints. But his spirit, where do we think we come from? Dirt doesn't have a spirit. The spirit of God gives life. I understand, don't give people a pass card, saints. Everybody needs to take care of their business and do what the Lord has said to do. We need to understand that all of us, your friends you work with, no matter if they want to go to church, no matter if they're playing golf right now, you have to let them know, man, you should have been at church because God's going to judge you on that. And then you got to do what's right. Yeah. How are you going to do what's right when you're not getting the instruction? Many saints have learned that also. So we're going to talk more about uh, the idea and understanding of love as it is displayed uh, in the scriptures that we know. One thing I want to encourage you saints <coughs> to remember to read your answer. Amen. Right. Amen. Brethren, sometimes I sit back and I just look and laugh and say, man, you are so ignorant. When you were getting told lies in the church of Christ. I say nobody ever read you down. They just told you something. And gave you a scripture. But you never asked them. Because I didn't really care. I was sinning too at times. Didn't really ask. Can you read that answer? And when I start asking those questions. That's when you find out you're talking to a Baptist. Who's in the church of Christ. I know I said something then. You're talking to a Methodist. Who just happened to be hiding out in the church of Christ. 
You're talking to an atheist who happens to be hiding out in the church of Christ. Was a member, but now is a son of Bilal. See, a son of Bilal is a bona fide member of the church that does not follow what it teaches. Just as the sons of Bilal and daughters of Bilal exist in the Old Testament. Same thing. Just different age with airplanes and computers. Same sense. So now we're going to talk about is your religion is your religion origami? Is your religion origami? This should be enjoyable to the righteous and very painful for the sinners. Because origami is the Japanese art of taking paper and folding it. The word literally means to take paper and fold. And what they do is take paper and fold and make it look like animals. It's a very beautiful art. It's a learnable art. Some are better than others. And what happens is they make it look like a giraffe. Or they make it look like a cheetah. But it's not. And so what we do is we take the paper that's in our heart, not the words of the scripture, and we fold it to look like Jesus, to look like the church of Christ, to look like a holy woman, to look like a holy man, to look like a gospel preacher, and we fold it to look like an elder, to look like a deacon, to look like a Bible teacher, to look like a faithful single, to look like a faithful child to our parents, and we're lying. And God can see that, just like you can see, that's cute. But that's not no real tiger. That's a folded piece of paper. So I say, well, I was saying, and, 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 you, know, you know what the problem is, is that the more simple you get with a message, the more people hate it that don't love the Lord. And they will mock you for the simplicity. But I guarantee you, it's people making bank with origami. And it's people making bank in the church of Christ with spiritual fake origami foldings. Yes. Getting rich off of saints like you and me who are so busy sinning, we just don't have time to stop Amen. and say, can you read that for me, please? Like you just said. So, let's look at this stuff. Ecclesiastes 5, if you will, verse 1 through 3. That's where we're going to go. Ecclesiastes 5. Verse 1 says, Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. Now see, I want to stop right here and make a point. Because I am overwhelmed, and you should be too. Because God is tired of it himself. That every time we go to the Old Testament to make a point, there's a crook with his hand in your pocket of mine that wants to say that doesn't mean the same thing today. Mm. See, if you write books, which is no problem with that, if you sell your CDs, that's all right if you want to do that. But if you do that, you got a problem with Jesus flipping over tables and telling people to get these things hence. Mm. See, because I can read in the Bible, the items I will mention are all used for sacrifice. None of it is used for that Religious purpose in the Jews in sacrifice. Oxen, doves, this was used for sacrifice. So they thought of an ingenious plan, convenience. That's how the animals here in the courtyard when they walk up in. But Jesus came down to pray and he said, let's get this stuff out of here. Now see, the temple of God is what you see now. The people gather and there's one all over the earth. Some a little bit before we gather because of the time frame. Some a little bit after we gather because of their time frame. It'll still be Sunday in their time frame. Amen. Now the difference is when we gather, yeah, the building, that's right, that's not it. But let me explain something to you. When you gather in a temple, the building was a temple, but the spirituality was always in the saints. There's no spirituality in a wall. And that's why the Lord said, I never have dwelt. I do not dwell in temples made with man, including the one he told them made. So he told them one day, though, I'm going to dwell in you. What filled the temple was his glory. His glory. That is so simple and it's readable. So, when you get to a statement like this, the house of God, keep that foot. When a brother that's selling his books, I ought to call him out. There's a bunch of them, and I'm going to give him some mercy. Because he's going to fix that statement. And if he don't fix it, then you're going to hear about it. Because, brethren, we, we got saints 
that are trying to win souls. And every time we try to win a soul, the soul here a clown like this. Amen. Say that. And that's what he is. Because he lied on the doctrine and told a group of saints that people like me, not calling me out, are taken out of context. Temple of God. And I'm going to tell you this word, house of God, that means I don't need to keep my foot when I go where he at, right? Amen. When I walk in the door, I can say, hold on, brother, let's shut it down. I'm going to tell you what I think. My turn. Because it's not the house of God, right? He definitely talked about the physical house of God when he wrote this. So do I have to keep my foot? Because if it's not the house of God where you can sell your books, then I don't have to keep my foot. Amen. I can open my mouth when I want. <clears throat> See, that's how you stop a liar. Amen. And I read my answer. If this is the house of God, then it's the same house of God that you can't sell your books in. If it was so good, put it all online. Put me online. If it was so good before they had online, all you got to do is say you got one and they'll come by. Sell it out your house. That's definitely not the temple of God. Even if the church was at your house, it's not at your house on Monday. You living in there eating, having babies, sleeping with your wife. I know that's not the church on Monday. So it was only the gathering of saints, the person opened their heart. It wasn't a 24 hours church. That's what people need to understand. That was the person's house. They gathered there for worship. So all this 24 hour, 7 day a week stuff people trying to push in the church building. Just because it's a building that got this big old building. Why you ain't telling people when they had a church and house? Got this big old house. Well, I'd be up in there every day. Man, you couldn't live all up in your house all day long. Who going to be there to watch it? It's not even your house no more. That's ridiculous teaching. When you gather, it's the church. And we're going to read after we read these three verses. See, brethren, we need to understand, when we die, the Lord don't want to hear what nobody told you. He wants to hear, what did you say out your mouth? Because see, you're going to repeat what you believe. And then he's going to ask, what did you have in your heart? Because that's what he's judging. We're not the Baptist church. We're not the Catholic. We're supposed to be the Lord's church. So he says, Keep your food and go to the house of God and be more ready to hear. See, I don't have to hear because it's not the house of God. He's selling his books and I don't have to hear. Selling his CD. Got, a, got Joel Osteen picture in there with a book. I don't know how that one got in there. Isn't that equivalent to Tobias being in the temple with a seat that's not his to have? I got a message coming out. I just hope I don't die before I preach it. But it's going to be dealing with all I'm going to show you how hypocritical. It is to do MLK days in the church. I'm going to show you some people in the Bible that did more than MLK could have ever did. Because they actually did something <laughs> physical for Israel that helped them acquire some spiritual strength. But they did it physically. That's definitely not what MLK did. I'm talking about Martin Luther King. But nobody sung no song about him because he wasn't a member of the church. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? And it's going to be in the Bible since the Lord wrote it. But don't nobody want to talk about it because I want to praise dance on MLK Day. I'm definitely not going to preach about it if I'm Richard Barthel. Now that name I'm going to call up because we know about him. Nevertheless, let's move forward. Then to give the sacrifice of food which is not to him for they consider not that they do evil. This is evil. Yes. To come into the law and not heal the word of God. Yes. They're not talking about he and him. See, when he's preaching false, if I'm preaching false, God forbid, it's to heal the word of God. Yes. Be more ready to hear the word of God. Yes. Not another lie, because we all got a lie. We want to be sinful. Verse 2 Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. Not man say before God. When we come to the house, what we're thinking and saying is to God. It's all about God. That's why you don't bring no pitch pipe instrument in. Because it's not how it sounds. It's if it is sound. Right. I hope y'all believe that, brethren. Yes. I really hope you do that a pitch pipe is an instrument. Because the people that make it, they'll tell you, it's a little pipe organ. And they made it. Yeah. Now, they all know what they made. They're going to tell a man what he made what it is. And he made it. If you knew how to play it good, you could play a tune if you were skilled. Amen. Just don't know how to use it. That's right. Verse 3, for a dream, he says, let your words be few, in verse 2. He says, why, for God is in heaven. See, it's all about God. And thou upon earth, you below him, and I'm below him. Therefore, let thy words be few. See, because when you come to the house of God, the presence of God is like, if it's the law of church, and the council that have been removed. If not, you can do what you want, because it's your church. The Lord is, listen, what are my children going to say to me today? 
God don't listen to tunes because he would have to put in the Bible how something good should sound good. That's right. He ain't never told us that. He ain't never told us that one. Mm, 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 mm. I guarantee you, if you really want to make something sound good, put an instrument with it. It's going to be boogie down time. So now we could tell them, you're going to blow that pitch pipe all day. You still don't sound like the instrument when it kick off. So that's what the denomination wanted to tell us. And who can lie and say, it sounds to me, say, it sounds to all police. Then why don't you listen to all your music a cappella? Because you know it sounds different. But being sound is what the Lord is looking for. Is it coming from your heart, right? And is what you're saying, right? I bet you we can't say that there's more than one church a cappella. There's more than one church, and we all know it. There's more than one church, and more than one law. Can't say that one, can we? Amen. A cappella, I didn't see an instrument, no pitch pipe or nothing. But the words are incorrect. See, brethren, that's how I say. Read the answer. That's all we got. It'll make somebody mad, but it'll send us to heaven every time. For a dream coming through the multitude of business. See, what you dreamt about, just a lot of stuff happened that day. You saw a hamburger and you dreamed about a burger eating you up or something crazy like that. And a fool's voice is known by a multitude of words. That's what we're looking at. Now, as a gathering of the temple of the Lord, quickly, if you can, go to 1 Corinthians. And the only way it becomes the temple of the Lord is if somebody come in there with him in them. See, that's how it becomes the temple of the Lord. First uh, Corinthians uh, chapter number 3, if you will. Look at verse number uh, 15. If any man's work be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved. Yet so as by fire, whoever you working on, whatever you're dealing with, you're going to be saved, not because they made in, because you are right inside. It's like you can go to the airport. Luggage might not make it, but you're going to get in. Now, they're going to hold your luggage, check you out, make everything all right. But you can go and catch your plane unless it's find something in there that's really bad. And they're going to hold you and the luggage. Verse 16, know you not that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. That's collective speaking because he's speaking to all who are members of the church. This is not for anyone. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which shall be Now that's the word, temple of God. There it is. So when I come to this guy, I got to keep my foot too. I need to be saying what the Lord said. Y'all need to call me down. So it's saying to you. So just like when we come and do that, don't bring no books in here selling it. Because even if it was good, we don't want to buy that. Don't bring a Bible. Say you can give one away. All they hand our Bibles free. All he not gonna hand his book out free. Mm -mm. He don't do that because he plan on making money with. No problem with it. No problem. I can write too. I know how to write. I know how to write. Brother Hunt used to always tease me when he was alive. He said he gonna be a writer. He would always tease, egging me on. I can write a book. I'm not without knowledge, and I can write one I can really sell because I know how they want you to lie. But I'm trying to go to heaven. Now, I didn't say I was wrong to write a book. But to lie will put a lot of money in your pocket. In the church of Christ. There'll be a brethren lined up down the street to buy. It because that's how evil men are. Nevertheless, we're going to do what's right. Look at, if you will, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Now here is the individual mentality of the same thought. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Verse 13, meats for the belly and the belly for meats. But God shall destroy both it and them. You know so, so you can't eat nothing that's going to make you holy. And just get away there. What vegans are nothing but idolaters. The originals that thought is wrong to kill an animal. And I'm going to tell you why. Because they said man is an animal. He should not eat his own. But he can't stop a lion from eating another giraffe. See, because he know he'll get ate up. And never be able to explain now. Never. To be a vegan for help is beautiful. Don't tell me my body not made to digest meat because God made it to digest right. meat. Because right. he don't want to see it rise, kill, and eat. Right. Now, if you don't want to eat no pork, that's you. If I can eat a little bit, don't get mad at me. 
because I'm going to try to ride my bike and exercise it off, but that's where it's at. So there's nobody going to hell, none of that. I'm going to drink milk. I know the cow got a face, and I'm going to drink all the milk he can make because my body can drink and produce and digest down me milk because God said Israel to make it look beautiful as a land of milk and honey. Milk can't be that bad. See, I don't watch what you sound to mom. That's right. You know, knocking milk. Don't drink it. Right. Eat what you want. Don't knock what I'm eating. Eat what you want. Nobody asks you nothing. That's right. Gosh, me. If you want to be healthy, if I'm complaining about my cider and you tell me something else, okay, great. Now, if I don't do it, leave me alone. Let me die. Amen. But the idea, don't try to bring no thought in what the body can't do because God said it can. Mm -hmm. See, that's the vegan because that's what he thought. And it comes from the Indian culture. Oh, they can lie or pull that up on the internet. That's easy to find. Read a few minutes of it. Hang it up and read the Bible and find out the real truth about life. He says, verse 14, And God had raised up both the Lord who will raise up us by his own power. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? God forbid. What know ye not that that which is joined to a harlot is one body? It goes spiritual, origami, fake lies that I can have sex and ask God to forgive me as a single person, but I can't never get remarried again and do it the right way and marry after divorce and live right. See, that's the lie. Now, let's watch God make sleeping with a prostitute a marriage. And I'm going to tell you now, I'll pay $150. If God can make me pick up cans to debate anybody on the app, live that'll go all the way to the Ukraine, I'm going to show you this is a marriage. But his mercy and grace says I forgave. All them hoes, because that's what they are, that men slept with, that's not righteous on the earth, you were adjoined to each one by God because of the lie that they try to tell today, the consummation is sex. I said, they'll say it's consummated in the marriage. But the heart of it is different. That's where God gets you at. He said, that's the natural consummation. Illegal. But I forgave you of it. But he's not going to forgive to get married again the right way. Oh, saints of God. How much are we going to get lied to when we stop dealing with brethren like that? Calm them down. Look at the terminology. Listen to this. When it's spiritual or physical, it's always about marriage. You've never seen no son to his father to become one flesh. You don't see that. Mama to the daughter to become one flesh. This is a term for marriage only. And we're going to read this now. Jose ain't saying a lot. And he's going to read it. So y'all don't have to sit me down. Because I know y'all will not play. He says in verse 16, what? No, you not. That he which is joined to an harlot is what one body. Amen. For two said he who God and Adam shall be one flesh. That's the term for marriage all day long. Mm -hmm. So every harlot, whether you paid her or she was a freebie, you were joined to. Amen. But God forgave. Mm -hmm. See, that's what a person got to understand. It was two witnesses there too. Guess what? You and her. Guess who the third one was? God. Everybody know it. But see, I'm not going to talk about that. But see, that's called reading the answer, brethren. Look at what else he says. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. See, we can never be one flesh with the Lord. So in Ephesians 5, he's talking about our spirit is joined to the Lord. That doesn't happen if I'm a Buddhist. Because I'm not joining the spirit. I could come in here and work with y'all every Sunday. Go through the emotion and get more money than anyone. But I'm not a joint the spirit. Because to be one spirit, you have to be baptized into the law. That's religious origami. Fold it up like you want and fake as can be. You know a person that knows what an album looks like, even a child. You could show them a little origami fold and say... Is that, is that a real horsey? They say, no. So, so okay, what does this look like? That, that looks like a giraffe. Say, is it real? No. Say, so where you find a real? In the zoo? In Africa? He's not in the place. Child know that. So I walk up and look at the religion. That's fake, man. That's not real. Your religion is fake. Your idea of fake. Your friends are fake. That's not true spirituality. But a child can determine and will agree, yeah, that's not a real one. That's right. Looks like it. But God the Father and we the child. So God puts this religion by to say, is that mine? And we go, no. Somebody else go, yes it is. So if his brother or sister say, that is a real giraffe. What will you tell them? Child, it is not. 
What you think God going to say? It's not. Your religion is false and fake and fraudulent. Even if it say Church of Christ on the sign, if it's not going to be conducted right. So he says this statement to a Verse 18, flee fornication, because that's what it's called. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committed fornication sinned against his own body. So, the teaching in the church, in many areas, the members, should I say, not the church, the church don't teach nothing for them. The members, the spots and the wrinkles, say that, okay, you know, you just hang in there. You come and tell a person, you know, you know, I've been trying, you know, uh, I've sinned. They can ask you, well, what, what, what are you struggling with? You know, I'm single, you know, and, and uh, I've been divorced. And, uh, you know, uh, I know I can't marry again because it was my fault. And, uh, but I slipped last night. And, you know, pray for me that I'll be strong. You know what that devil will tell you? The Lord will be with you, child. I'm going to pray for you. You better watch him. He might sleep with you too. Amen. Move forward. And so, instead of going, why don't you just marry? Because 1 Corinthians 7 instructs you to marry if you can't contain. But see, I'm a crook too because I'm doing something. I'm just not doing that what you're doing. I can't afford to tell you the truth because now I'm going to have to start living it. Oh, baptism, yeah, because we got to get them in, but we'll kill them later. See, this is the mentality of the Pharisees. We'll go all over high, no, let's get them on in. Then we get in, let's teach them, you know, to when they reach a certain age, they don't have to respect their parents no more. You know, give the money to us. Let's teach them, you know, when you see me come by in my long robe, I'm going to make sure you honor me. When you see me come in, if I'm running late, give me the high seat before y'all start the feast, because I want to make sure I get the high seat. But see, that's okay. Call me doctor, too, rabbi. And father, yeah, you know. See, and then I kill you late. Just like a parent that has a child and don't look out for him, you end up being dying later of starvation, like the family. Everybody thought that family. house was immaculate. To the day they got arrested, house immaculate. A lot of people think a pretty house is a beautiful family. They come out waving. They might be the biggest pedophiles on the earth. They wait till all that beautiful family. Car always, you know, car is so clean you can eat off of it. Another guy come out ragged and caught shaking, weeds around the house, he's down, but probably selling drugs. <laughs> Holiest man walking on the earth, possibly. Isn't that amazing how we judge by the outward yeah. and not the inward? Yeah. That's amazing. But God will judge that too. So he says, free fornication. He says, it's all outside of the body. But fornication is sin against the body. Yeah. So all sexual immorality is a sin against your own temple. Now, he's going to explain why it's so important to not send against body. Not smoking cigarettes. Weed is different unless doctor induced. Weed is to get high. Drinking liquor is to get high. So, y'all understand what you're dealing with now? So, why well, y'all drink when I eat dinner? If you go to France, there'll be wine everywhere. It's getting real. California, too. Big wine drink. Everybody don't get drink my sis. I'm so I'm drinking wine. Yeah, but he doesn't tear at the wine. But we're talking about getting drunk. Amen. We're talking about that's the bad part. <laughs> I've never seen a person smoke a cigarette and cool fit the king and blow it out. Now I'm going to bust your side of your head. There's nothing in there to get you out. See, a person got to stop. That's a lie. And it came from the denomination world. We hear a lot. In the church of Christ, for some reason, the saints have accepted. <laughs> I tell brother all the time, man, where'd you get that? How did you get that? Do you even know what a cigarette is? It's like, who wants to teach the truth? Please rise up and help. It's ridiculous. So that boy says, every sin, so it has to be a sin. Verse 19, what? Know you not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you. See, he has to be in you. So it's his temple. So if he's not in you, it's not his temple. But all souls are mine. So the Lord said, I'm going to get you. If you didn't take care of the soul I gave you. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to say, well, I, I never got the Holy Ghost. I mean, okay, that's even worse. You never tried to keep my temple clean. My soul is still yours. That, that, that soul is mine. Forgive me. Your soul. That belongs to the Lord. And he's saying, your soul is mine. I own that property. Mm -hmm. And I want it to be delivered to me the way I created it, which... Is not in sin like people teach a lot that sins are already in the soul. It's ridiculous. That will make it God fault. So he says, which you have of God, so you get the Holy Ghost of God, and you are not your own. Now that's the text. For you are brought with the price. Yes. Therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God. So, glory. so if you had high blood pressure, you so much as 
take some salt past the 2,000 milligrams of toilet. You're not a sinner, you're a beast from hell. Trying to destroy God's body. That would be ridiculous, wouldn't it? See, this is what's wrong with human beings. We have to understand that the individual, basically, everything you put in your mouth, none of it can keep you alive anyway, saints. That's what the Lord said in Matthew 6. You can't keep yourself alive the next day if right. you wanted to. Right. If you try. Right. He gives life. Physical and spiritual. So I know we understand that. We believe that. So let's go back. Now we've settled this battle between evil men trying to deny the power of the living God. And understanding what is sin. See that's a part of the origami fake religion is to try to twist what sin means to fold it a different way so you look at it from a different angle nevertheless the bible is going to stay right always look at Matthew 15 if you will Matthew chapter 15 look at verse 1 here comes a major battle between Jesus and some so called religious teachers you know a lot of people don't understand Jesus is an outsider to them he has not gone to their school he does not want to go to their school. He condemns what their school teaches. He condemns what they teach in the street. He only honors what they teach when they read from Moses' law. And so they don't like him. So in their mind, they're not going, we're well, arguing with the Son of God. They're not going, we're arguing with a guy who we can't find nothing wrong with, but we don't like him anyway. See, that's the sin. And when he produces so many good works, many of them, not all, and never said all. Many of them do accept in their heart. He's the Christ. The Son of God. But they won't acknowledge him. Because of the fear of being tossed out the temple. Yeah. Two of them. Yeah. Joseph of Arimathea. Nicodemus. Two cowards. Always remember they're cowards. And if you walk like them. You're going to burn in hell too. And so will I. Yeah. Because they would not openly. Publicly confess he's Christ. Okay they wouldn't condemn him. Oh that's nice. You know that's like a Ku Klux Klan or a Black Panther. Saying well, I won't blow his head off here. But if you shoot him I won't say I saw you. <laughs> so you think that's okay right? That's ridiculous. That's what Joel and Nicodemus are. We shouldn't condemn him. We haven't proven anything. But you're not trying to rescue him. You're not. When they ask you point blank. Are you his follower too? I'm just saying, you know, oh yeah, nice correction. Because you're not as followed, you coward. See, we don't like, see that word coward is very rough. Ooh, saying, yeah, that's right. Because that's what the Lord says. You will not stand for me. So when you come before me, Jesus said, you think I'm going to acknowledge you? That you with us? So I'm going to deny you. Before my father. I don't know this clown. We never had no relationship. He wouldn't listen to me. Oh, we say, oh so yeah, you did, but they got in, but you not. Because you can't pass through the lie detector. You're not right. That's what we don't want. It cannot be a folded up religion. You must be it. Amen. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ. So he says in verse 1. Then came Jesus to the scribes and Pharisees which were of Jerusalem saying. Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? I hear the tradition of the elders. But they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, Why do you transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Uh-oh, now we got a battle. Verse 4, For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But you say, Uh-oh, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift. By whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. You know, that would be like, so, you know, your mother and them need you to take them for a ride somewhere. Yeah, you grown now. You got three Cadillacs grown. Pockets fat with money. You know, living large. Pool in the backyard. And your mom say, you know, I need you to take me to the store. You know, again, I know I forgot some things yesterday. You know, you know, well, mama, you know, whatever I do, you remember, that's a gift, baby. That's a gift. I love you, but you, know, you brought me here, but Jesus is my Lord. That's a gift. I'm, I don't mean to give no gift today. I'm busy. You know, see, now... You can explain why you can't come, but you can't break it down like that. That's what it means to tell your parents, father, mother, whatever I do for you is a gift. You got to understand, I'm grown now. Shoot, man, I got children, you know, 25. You know, I love them, but man, you know, mama's something else. Shoot, man. You know, so I'll be glad I'm doing it. You've already said, punch my ticket for hell, please, and give me a front row seat. See, because... 
you're going to always be in debt to your mother and father. Amen. Bottom line, period. Amen. That's what the command says. If you want long days, yes. and you want them to be good while you're here, yes. you're in yes. debt. And so am I. Mine are gone now. But I do not regret anything which I could have done much, much more for them. Amen. So, Amen. he says, this is the result. Thus have you made the commandment of God of none effect by a tradition. Well, because it doesn't have an effect on the souls now. Mm -hmm. See, when, when you lie on the gospel, it no longer affects the souls that are hearing because they believe you. But, but some of them say, well, that's their problem. Yeah, but the Lord is saying, no, no, no. I put you there to say what I said. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make your life a miserable existence forever. And I'm going to give you some trouble while you're on the earth too. See, because he's not going to let us cause his children to die lost and then not whoop us too. So he says here, you hypocrites. Ouch. See, an actor. The folded origami saint. He looks like a man. He has little arms and five fingers. And you can ask your child, is this a man or an animal? Contrary to the lying vegan creator, that's a man. And then, and then you put one with a little cut out of a thing like a triangle to make it look like a dress and don't put no hat just say what's that one that's a woman mm. you ever notice when you go and travel you notice the icon that's on the outside of the restroom still got a dress right mm -hmm. that's why it's such a big debate what are we going to do with the homosexual tell them what was you born at mm. that's the one you go in right, right. If you get trouble because of the way you dress, that's your fault. That's right. <laughs> no, that's what I'm doing. Hey, because the because the, the icon say you should have a dress or some meaning that you're female. Right. It's an image. Right. Folded man mm. by another man. He looks like he's righteous, but he's not. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. So the child can say, woman, man, dog. The little child. I challenge you, get some real organic day folded look real good. Put it before your children. Just tell them, what's that, baby? What's that? I guarantee he's not going to call that tall one no animal. He not. Because the concept of life and truth has been given. That's not what it's about. But you cannot compromise sin. You have to speak against it and not follow it. So he says here, look what he says. Uh, well did Isaiah prophesy of you saying, these people draw near to me or not to me with their mouth. See, the mouth, we love you, Lord. You know, Jesus gave his life for us. I'm singing a beautiful song <clears throat> with the mouth and an army with the lips. As one God. And he's God over all. And say, he don't believe that. He's saying it. But their heart is far from me. But in vain, they do worship me. See, so now the worship that's given, the honor and the praise, not the correct teaching in the church of Christ that baptizes the soul, that's said right, the action done right. But the worship that you're giving, thinking that baptizing that soul is going to save you, is not. See, you aren't sent to baptize, you're sent to teach the truth. And whosoever will, let him come and he'll get baptized. What Paul said, was sent to baptize. He did baptize. Does that mean he's a fool? No. That means he's saying, I didn't go to baptize. I went to preach the doctrine. Whosoever will, let him come. So, if the person gets baptized, that's why it's no blessing to you. It's a blessing to them. The blessing to you would be that now when you teach truth on something else, it has to be the same way. It must be true. And then you must live it. Amen. You got to live it. So he says, uh, teaching for doctrines. See, this is incredible. The commandments are the instructions of men. See, I'm teaching that for doctrine. So I'm going to invite the male over. Ouch! Now, is he in the church? If he is, don't invite him over to talk about the city. Tell him, come tell us something about Jesus. You lose either way. But to, to invite to buy to the temple, Nehemiah was ready to whoop folks. Grab him by the house, slap him by the head, and the Lord brought no harm. You I mean that's amazing? We don't want to do that today because we're not strikers. But Nehemiah is displaying the anger of the Lord. Mm -hmm. What is he doing in the temple? And then you know who he ran off from the temple? We talked about these are past pastors, you can pull them up online. He ran off the priest who led him in. 
He ran away from the temple. That's what the Bible says. He's running away. Get out of here. Get away from the temple. I don't want you here. He's not a man. And he's not a priest. That's right. He's definitely not Moses because Moses is already dead. Isn't that amazing? He's a food taster for a foreign king. Ouch! There goes the upper echelon. My family been in the church since 1600. I want to hear that, man. <laughs> Are you living right and can you direct? That's all that's needed. So he says here, and he called them up to them and said unto them, Hear what I'm saying. He told them, Come here, come here, let me tell y'all something. Listen to me, he said. Hear what I'm saying and understand. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. So this is the, the, the weirdness of drinking. You drink, okay. You can eat dinner. A lot of people drink. See, saints, we need to understand something. Some areas are not very much into wine and traditions of winery. And some areas are. And they eat, man, that's a normal thing they bring out tomorrow. Let's drink the, let's drink the uh, whatever fancy name for this one tonight. At the house, they got it in their house. They're okay, they cook with it. They, you know, it's okay. But, you know, they know when to stop. They get ready to put them on. No, they put the hammer cup. Mm -mm, thank you, that's enough. That's it. I'm done. You know? He's not buzzed, but he's dry. He's not, blah, blah, blah. He's not, not a, it's just, he, he's, he's eating and he's drinking. Usually a low alcohol, but if you drink enough, you can still get you drunk. Right. So he's eating and drinking. But if you drink, say, well, I had too much, you cuss out your mom on the way home. <laughs> see, you going to hell. You need to repent because what came out your mouth is evil. Not that what went in. See, that's the difference. Because the Lord is going to literally give them the type of wine that will knock out. And it's so good they can taste it. But it's the good stuff. They use it to roll. It's our first. <laughs> See, you know why? Because when you've been drinking, you kind of buzz. Oh, and they bring the nasty stuff later. That lets you know Jesus gave them the good stuff. But he never said, get drunk. And he told them. Remember, brethren, don't get afraid. Read and believe. Right. Taste it. Take your time. Let him taste it. Mm -hmm. See, brethren, mm -hmm. you have a creator that made us, and we did not make ourselves. You don't get to tell him how much is too much and how much is too little. You repeat what he said, and that's what I'm going to do, and get out the way oh, and yeah. obey. Don't try to tell people what they can and cannot do beyond what's written. I said can and cannot do beyond what's written. Well, you're afraid of another man. It might not even bother him. But what he sends in, that's what he's going to hell for. And so would you and I. You can never sleep together, though, and cohabitate. See, somebody say, they got a lot of actresses, very famous people. Love, oh, I love her. Well, I love her too. Very nice actor. That's all it is. Actress is that, well, you know, me and my husband together for years, but we didn't get mad. I don't need a piece of paper or a ring to tell me. Yeah, but see, God say, you need a piece of paper or a ring or jump backwards over broom, do something before somebody other than y'all two so that the third witness can be of the earth so we can know I saw them flip the coin with each other and they're married. Right. Because otherwise you're cohabitating and we got to say something yes. about that. Right. Shacking. Right. Shacking. It's a sin. It is. Romans, yeah. it's a sin. It's yeah. a nasty word to live together. Yes. Yes. See, saints, one of the things we need to understand is when the Lord uses the word seed in many, 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 many references, more than you care to remember, it's talking about the male sperm. I don't think we know that. One of the meanings in that word would be male sperm. It means it gives life. Yes. So you can use a word for a negative or positive, talking about fruit, whatever. But it has to give life. Amen. You're not allowed to be given life if you're not going to make the commitment to honor each other in marriage. Because you're going to burn in hell for it. Because the Lord say, no, nah, I got honor. I don't care what Texas legislator. If he in the church of Christ, I don't matter care about him. He's not Jesus. You cannot make a law where the law does not allow a law to exist. Amen. You definitely cannot remove a law that he has said. And, and some of us, we have said things for years, but we're not allowed the law. But we got to understand at one point we got to die because the law going to let us hear the truth so we can adjust that. Because you cannot get into heaven as a legalist, a liberal, or a politician. I have to be a member of the law church. And I don't mean politician meaning holding a post of politician. I mean being a politician in religion. That's what we don't want. So let's wrap this up. And then we'll have part two next week if the Lord let us live. He says, Then came his disciples 
Now they notice somebody's gotten their feathers ruffled. Someone's hair has been rubbed the wrong way. Then came his disciples and said to them, Nor stop that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. Now that's the same man he's going to say in Matthew 23, just about eight chapters over. He's going to say, listen to what they say and observe it and do it. When they sit in Moses' seat, when they're reading direct from the law. He said, but don't do as they do. For they say and do not. That's what he said. And then the people in the denominational church say, yeah, do as I say, now I do. But he can't even teach truth. You can't even do what he say or what he do. He's lying on both ends. At least among the saints, you may find some who teach truth but don't do it. At least you can learn of the truth they taught. That's the key. If it's truth taught. So he says, Let them alone that be blind leaders of the blind. If the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. That's a simple one. Verse 15, Then answered Peter and said unto them, Declare unto us this parable. And Jesus said, Are you also without understanding? See, now this is a rebuke answer. Like you'd be talking to your children, and they say, What does this mean? He said, You don't understand this? Like, you know, I've taught you this before. Verse 17, do not you yet understand that whatsoever enter it in at the mouth goes into the belly and it cast out the drop. They should have known that from what they eat food. Amen. He's also made the spiritual application they still not getting. Verse 18, but those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart. And they defile the man. Look at the list. For out of the heart proceeded evil thoughts, yes. murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts. You know, thieves think they're not going to hell for some reason, you know. I did my time. I did my time in Huntsville. And then you got to tell me, but, 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 but you didn't even go to church. And you haven't got baptized yet. So if you did go, you probably go to the wrong one. You know the, what you stole when coming to jail. No, because he going to say that Texas punishment. No, no, no. But, but no, no, that's a physical. The punishment from hell comes later for stealing. Because it says thefts. And they don't have a parenthesis except those who've gone to jail. It's not that. It's not in it. Nowhere is it taught. False witnesses. This can't be a false witness, you know. What's a false witness? I bet, I bet, I bet he don't like me. He jealous of me. Because I'm a priest. He jealous of me. Because I'm his boss. I bet he don't like me. See, that's a false witness. You're giving that report. You, 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 can you prove that? When you go for the judge, you say, The Lord said, okay, I'm going to let you in heaven. Got one question. The guy you said didn't like you. You got to answer it correct. Did he or didn't he? See, you might have been right, but did he or didn't he? Now, if you get it wrong, you're going here. Now, who's going to want that? Nobody. So don't do it down here now. That's right. If you think, do you like me? <laughs> and if he lies, say, yes, all right, great. So he likes me, he told me he likes. But don't guess. You can't guess. If you're too scared to ask, don't say nothing, good or bad. Just leave it alone and leave it at that. The Bible says to think on good things. So the best you can do is say, he's a great guy. Comes to work. He's a great guy. That's all I know. He says, uh, blasphemies, speak against the Lord. It's a cute thing to say O-M and you know what the G is. Brethren, don't do that. See, because you can't say I meant gosh, G-O-S-A, because everybody don't mean that with O-M-G. So don't say it. Don't acronym it. Don't do nothing. Say, oh my gosh. Heavy on the SH. Or just say, oh my. Don't be hitting these buttons texting. Whether you part or not with that one. Because you're taking his name in vain. It's you're injuring it. That it doesn't mean anything. I can just take it and say what I want. I'll attribute to anything. You bought some new shoes and then you want to say that. Yeah. Using law and oh, something silly like that. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashing hands defile it not a man. Then Jesus went thence and departed unto the coast of Tyre and Sidon. So now we understand he, he said his point. He's made his application. But this is the thing you and I need to understand. Is that these men who are evil of the earth, they actually have judged Jesus. Look at Luke chapter 11 and we're done. Now he's taught this message but they're going to actually judge him for not washing his hands before he eats. Now he's already taught the truth about it. 
Verse 37, And as he spake, a certain Pharisee brought him to dine with him. Luke 11, 37. And he went in and sat down to meet. And when the Pharisee saw it, he marveled that he had not first washed before dinner. See, he's following tradition of the elders. Isn't that amazing? Tradition. And the Lord said unto him, Now do ye Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup and the platter. But your inward part is full of ravening and wickedness. You fools. Did not he that made that which is without make that which is within also. But rather gives alms of such things as you have. And behold, all things are clean unto you. The law says you, you should be understanding the spirituality. Produce the spiritual teaching of what makes us clean. Give that understanding. Give this blessing to people. And if you give properly, whether it's physical giving, he says everything becomes clean to you. Because you're tuned into what's right inside. It's not about the money you got. Both rich and broke will go to hell. Both rich and broke will go to heaven. It just depends on the inside. But if you're here and you want to know what is the entrance, how do I get in? How do I not get into one of these folded up fake churches? Whether the sign says Church of Christ or not. Recognize first you've got to be baptized into the Lord's church. You can learn a lot by what people are teaching of how to get in. You recognize Jesus died and buried on the third day he rose again. 1 Corinthians 15, if you believe that. 1 through 4. The Lord says through Paul, if you hold on to this, this is how you hold on to Christianity. If you hold fast, the understanding of how you get in, see, because you'll never get involved in working with a person who's not in, because you know how to get in. You'll never say the wrong thing to an individual who's not in, because you'll know how to get in. And you'll never say the wrong thing to a person who's already in, because you'll know that's how I'll get pushed out. Hold on to it is what Christ said, because he died was buried on the third day he rose. Acts 19, 1 through 5 explains, even if you thought you were saved, and you know good and well the practice that you were doing at that place that saved you, you thought. The using of instruments, the uplifting of men, the teaching of false doctrine, the teaching of the tithe, and all such nonsense, your interest, you say, okay, did I get in? Did they teach how to get in right? Or did they say, oh, just get on, get baptized like Jesus did. So to be so for righteousness sake. Mm -mm. You got to get baptized again. That's what you understand. Because you never got it. The words are the seed. They are the thing that gives a life. Like the male seed, they are the thing that gives life. The same word as you. It's the thing that gives life. You have no life in you. Because the words were not of the Spirit of God. And he won't honor them. He won't. Remember, Paul's going to tell us who does not baptize. If you believe that, and you can embrace that. Remember what the Lord has taught us. That they had to be baptized again. Acts 19, verse 5. And they thought they, was, they had a baptism that's still in the Bible today. John. And they were waiting on Jesus. Boy, they sound like saints. Metaphorically, they got a sign of Church of Christ. But are they really in? Right, See, right. this is what you have to bring. And the Lord don't want to heal my explanation after judgment. Lord, I, you know you know my heart now. I thought I was in. And I said, no, you didn't. Because I had seven or eight different people tell you you weren't. And you need to get baptized again. And you just kept on walking with those people. You did not question. You did not ask them to read the answer in the book. And you know your entrance was not given correctly. Therefore, in Mark 16, 16, he states, He that believes, believes what? A lie? No. Has to be the truth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not. Well, if you don't believe a lie, obviously you would get baptized. It must be, I don't believe the truth. He says, that one shall be damned. He has two promises. One is good, one is bad. When Peter preached in Acts 2, verse 37, the men asked him and the others. Men, they didn't say Peter, men and brethren, meaning there was more than one. What shall we do? Repent and be baptized, 2.38 says. Every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, which is to be placed in His image. And then you have authority. And that will make you baptized by His authority. If the teacher does it right. It has to be right. The teacher also must be a member of the church. And the Lord going to let you know through His talking if He's a member. His speech will give way, just as that lady knew. 
You a Galilean, Peter. We know your mouth telling on you. You talk like them. So therefore he says, for the remission of sin, that's the only way they remove, and you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is a gift. Now here goes a gift. And a gift we do not deserve. Even when clean, because they have to clean us to give it to us. It is only by His grace and mercy. People spit on it like it's nothing. Jump up and turn flips, act silly. Let a man call himself doctor, which is Jesus' title. You'll never win that debate. If, if, if he debates a Baptist, we have to say, the Baptist won. Because if the Baptist guy tell you can't wear it, he know because they made it up for false. That's why Martin Luther King won one. It's fake. It's origami. They folded it, but the Lord don't give those kind of titles. Because right. that means he's lying. He's got more than one son. That's ridiculous, brethren. Do you know that Jesus is a shepherd, but the elders are shepherds too? But they're not the shepherd. Right. I know master means teacher, but you're not the teacher. Right. So don't go around. Teacher, old Zion, come forth. Don't be so silly. He's the teacher. That's ridiculous. Say you're all brethren. So we believe that. It says, for the promises unto you. And to your children, all that are far off, even as men as the Lord our God shall call. And men of the words, he testify, he encourage them. Save yourself from this untoward, that means crooked, perverted, just like a pedophile, perverted generation on, on a spiritual level. Then they that glad receive his word, baptized the same day, 3,000 souls added unto him. And they continue steadfast in the apostles' die. So you got to be added to the beloved. Paul said, we count it a blessing and joy to be added to the beloved. See, because he knew when I was a Pharisee, I was not. In the beloved. Right. So you got to be added to the church. And guess what? Guess who can't add us? The church. Amen. Isn't that amazing? The holiest of us cannot add us to the church. Amen. Only the Lord himself. Right. So don't ever put his title on. Amen. See, it is a title. And it's a title that the Lord got the broad enough shoulders to wear. Yes. See, he got the keys on his shoulder. <laughs> he runs the government. It's his. It's like the man would have the keys and open up. You couldn't get no wheat unless he opened up. Amen. Jesus got the keys. You never get the spirit. without. You never get the help. You know, you can have desire, zeal, but with no power. You ever been sick and try to reach for your glass of water at the person's left hand? Shake, grab a pool and follow. Oh, they're coming out to give it with you a straw. You want it. You got zeal. But you can't grab it because you got no power. You're nothing and I'm nothing without power. You don't want to go on that girl bed. I know you don't. And you got to see her help me, Father. You cry for you know you wake up and you're in her bed. And that's not your wife. Because you got no power. Amen. And you're going to die in hell because of it. Because the Lord said, you could I, I could have gave you more strength. You, you'd have ran out of there like Joe. She'd have ripped your pole. Yeah. You'd have ran out of there like a track star. Like Keith used to run. <laughs> Joseph, get out of there. Can't run, can't move. I, I, I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't do this. And therefore, you know the door is closed and locked. And you're the devil. Acting like you can't know what you're doing. Come before the Lord. It's going to be a big joke. He's going to say, I don't know you. Get from before me. See, brother, this is reality. And you're not going to get truth with people with all these books they're giving out. Selling Joel Osteen of all people to sell. And they got to pay for it, too. In the Lord house, at least they were selling oxen. Wasn't nobody selling no house. You know what? Buying a book in the Lord house that's Joel Osteen is like if he said oxen and doves and hogs. Mm. Nobody was going to bring no hog in there. <coughs> that's a hog. Right. Mm. <coughs> Brethren, wake up. Mm. Tell the people this is bad. Yeah. Nevertheless, he says clearly, and they continue steadfast in the apostles' doctrine, contrary to Joyce Miles and her foolishness about the apostles or egomaniacs, male chauvinists, Neanderthals, whatever. The apostles' doctrine, which Jesus prayed we would believe by the doctrine. The breaking of bread, they continue in that. Not like the denomination world, take it when we want. Every first day of the week, just like they take money every first day of the week. The prayer. And walking in a fellowship, which is delight. So walking in the light of Christ. First John chapter 1, verse 1 through the entire chapter. Whole system about walking in the light as Christ walks in the light. That's the fellowship. If you believe that, you can be saved. First Corinthians 12, 13 says, For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, for the Jew, Gentile, bond, free, and have all been made to drink 
into one spirit. If you believe that, then recognize this. When the eunuch wants to get baptized, Philip knows. He sees the water. He's got zeal. No power. Can't baptize. I said, why not just I mean, forget you, Philip? I'm baptizing so he can't. You know, they got brethren that teach in the church of Christ, you can baptize yourself. Yeah, they do, brother. Sign this beautiful church of Christ. You can baptize yourself. You know what I mean? They got brethren in the church who say, I won't baptize you because you've been mad before. You go back and get that right back and they will baptize you. In the church of Christ, more than you can count on two yes. hands. Yes. 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 Nevertheless, what does the Lord say? Philip says, if you believe with all your heart, you may. He didn't go, you married before? <laughs> That's an Ethiopian, man. And he's a believer like the Jews. He might have a whole bunch of women. But you don't think, when I wash you clean, you're going to know what to do. You go back again. I can't have all y'all. Somebody got to go. I can only have one. I give all y'all a piece of money. Like Abraham, I see you. May the Lord be with you. And I'm going to pray for you because I'm on the saint now. Amen. See, he knows. The vision is clear. I know what to do. I didn't say they didn't talk about it if he did. I'm saying it's not an explanation to be baptized because the sins are washed away. Now what are you going to do? You know, you can get baptized and have two bags, two kilos of cocaine in your house that you have bona fide paid for, major drug deal, and you get baptized. So when I pay for these, let's flush them down the toilet quickly and I will never touch these things again. I said, well, yeah, I'm out of the business. I'm a saint now. I said, well, who could do that? Let me tell you something. Jesus kills devils like you working with. You want to be saved? Get out. Ask the Lord to bless you. So y'all can have all my stuff. Y'all can have my house. All the good. The 15 gold Cadillacs. I don't want nothing. I mean all the keys. I'm no longer in dope no more. I leave. If you scared to do that, that's why you're going to be in hell. Because you don't deserve to go because you're a coward. The fearful have a place in the lake. You're too scared to trust God. Not by the way, you don't understand? Man, let me tell you something. That was a military army that could kill thousands and millions of people that the Lord saved Israel from. You got one little old crook you involved with. And if you just keep living, he gonna get old and can't even sell dope no more with knuckled up fingers. He won't even be able to shoot a gun no more. He won't even be able to know what is a gun? He'll think it's canned and try to eat it with Alzheimer's. And you worried about him? You better get your life right. Because the Lord is coming for you and me. You believe that and understand. Recognize Peter says baptism say it is a point where the soul is saved for by one spirit. Are we all baptized into one body? Well the Jew, Gentile, Boniface have all been made to drink into one spirit. It saves. 1 Peter 3.21 The like figure even baptism also now saves us. Don't worry about no thief on the cross. Not the putting away the filth of the flesh, but the answer for good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who's gone to heaven, angels, authorities, and powers are subject to him. If you believe that, God will rescue you right now. Are you ready, though? Key is, are you ready? Jesus gave us hope, Revelation 2.10. He says, be faithful unto death. He said, behold, the devil should cast some of you into prison. He gives the water. It's going to happen to some. You have tribulation 10 days. You better be ready, saints. I better be ready. Because the devil, he going to try everything and cool in the kitchen sink. He may start with the kitchen sink, like they say, to see if I can get you to mess up before the law. But now remember, saints, once you do, game over. Because it says, be faithful unto death. And then I'll give you everlasting life. That is his blessing. And we don't deserve it, yet he gives it. If you want this, you can get baptized now. If you need to get your life right, quit playing around. Quit waiting. Oh, I want, you know, wait a minute. Ask for help now and watch the Lord go to work. Come now, together we stand and sing Elvis' invitation. It is a fountain free, tears for you.